What's going on all my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. We're continuing on with learning how to pass our NCLEX and nursing exams like a boss, talking about arterial blood gases, and today we're going to do more examples of fully and partially compensated ABGs. Let's get our nurse on. So how do we determine if our body is compensating? So we determine this by our CO2, which is our carbon dioxide, and our HCO3, which is our bicarbonate. They're going to be abnormal and usually opposite of each other, right? So our CO2 is going to be alkalotic, and our HCO3 is going to be acidotic and vice versa. And then we also can break it down even further. So partially compensated arterial blood gases, the pH is still going to be abnormal. So the, by the metabolic and um, respiratory system is going to try to fix itself, but usually in the beginning of that, that pH is going to be abnormal. So when we have a abnormal pH, but our carbon dioxide and our bicarb are opposite of each other, trying to fix each other, then we have a partially compensated arterial blood gas. When it comes to full compensation, that's fully compensated, we're going to have a pH that is normal. So while those two systems are trying to fix each other, the pH has gone back to normal, which is between 7.35 to 7.45. That makes it a little bit difficult because then you have to determine whether it is a respiratory or metabolic source when it comes to your arterial blood gases. So we're gonna do a couple examples of what that looks like and how we make that determination. So let's begin with example number one. We have a pH of 7.3, a PaCO2 of 60, and a bicarb HCO3 of 30. So as always, we begin with our pH. Our pH is 7.3. Normal is between 7.35 to 7.45. We know that this value is low, so we're in more of an acidic state. Next, we're going to move on to our PaCO2. It's 60. Normal is between 35 to 45. We know that this number is high. We've got some pretty serious acid happening here because it's greater than 45, making us more acidic. Lastly, we're going to look at our HCO3. Our HCO3 is 30. We know that this is also high. But this is high for a different reason. When our bicarb is high, that means that there's less acid, particularly to the bicarb. So we know that this is gonna be more of an alkalotic state, right? So we begin by looking at what particularly is happening with our AVG. Is it a respiratory component or is it a metabolic component? So we know that our pH is low, 7.30. We know that it's an acid. We know that our PaCO2 is high. That also means that it's an acid. And we know that our HCO3 is high, but that makes it more alkalotic. So we've got two competing systems trying to fix each other, but we have to match it next to our pH. So if our pH is acidic and our PaCO2 is acidic, we know that it is a respiratory acidosis taking place inside the body. But like we talked about before, we've got two competing systems trying to fix each other. So we know that we've got some kind of compensation taking place, particularly what kind of compensation is happening. Well, we have to look at our pH, right? Well, our pH is still abnormal within the spectrum of everything that's occurring. So if we have an abnormal pH in two competing systems trying to fix each other, we know that this is only partially compensated, right? So we have a partially compensated respiratory acidosis. If our pH was within normal, if it was between that 7.35 to 7.45 and still met the requirements of those two competing systems trying to fix each other, then then we would have a fully compensated respiratory acidosis. But because our pH is still abnormal and we've got two systems competing to try to fix each other, we have a partially compensated respiratory acidosis. Let's take a look at another example. So in our next example, we have a pH of 7.45, a PaCO2 of 32, and an HCO3 of 20. So as always, we begin by looking at our pH. We have a pH of 7.45. So that's actually neutral. We know that a normal pH is between 7.35 to 7.45. So we have a neutral pH. 
Next, we take a look at our PaCO2. Our normal is between 35 to 45. We've got a value of 32. That is actually low. So when we don't have a high number, when it's not in that acidotic state, we're losing that acid, we're in a more alkalotic state with the respiratory component of our ABG. But we're not done yet. We need to take a look at the bicarb, right? So our bicarb is 20. That is going to be less than 21, right? So we're going to be in a more acidotic state because we know our bicarb is our buffer. That is our metabolic component. It's more basic, it's not acidic. So when it is low, we don't have enough buffer making it acidotic. So now we need to determine what kind of ABG this is. Well, again, we run into, oh, our pH is neutral. So what does that mean? Well, we take a look at what end of the spectrum it falls on. So normal in regards to pH land is 7.4, right? So if we've got 7.4 to 7.45, we know that we're leaning more towards an alkalotic state. Whereas if we have a pH of 7.35 to 7.4, we're leaning more towards an acidotic state. So in this situation, 7.45 is leaning more towards alkalosis. So we know that it's most likely an alkalotic issue. So then we take a look and we have to configure, is our respiratory component alkalotic or is our meta, a metabolic component alkalotic? And as we know, that respiratory component is alkalotic. So we have a respiratory alkalosis. You know what? I'm gonna make that a little bit more pretty. Alkalosis, there we go, alkalosis taking place. So now we needed to determine, is it compensated? It is because we've got two competing systems, our respiratory system and our, a our bicarb system, our HCO3 is out of whack, right? They're trying to fix each other. So we know we've got some kind of compensation taking place. Next, we need to take a look at our pH. Our pH is neutral, right? So when we know we have a neutral pH, regardless of what end of the spectrum it's falling on, we know that this particular blood gas is fully compensated. They have worked hard enough to get that body's pH back to normal. They're still competing. They're still trying to fix each other, but our pH is now back to normal. So we have a fully compensated respiratory alkalosis. It's gonna get easier, I promise. We're gonna do some more examples. So we have a pH of 7.23, a PaCO2 of 51, and a bicarbon HCO3 of 24. As always, we begin with our pH. Our pH is 7.23. That is less than our 7.35 normal value. So we know that we are in an acidotic state. Next, we need to take a look at our PaCO2. Our PaCO2 normal is 35 to 45. We know that this is higher than our 45, right? So we're going to be in an acidotic state when it comes to our PaCO2 component of the arterial blood gas. Lastly, we need to take a look at our HCO3, our bicarb. So normal is 21 to 28. So this is actually neutral, right? So this this value is a neutral value. So we have to determine now what's going on with our arterial blood gas. So we begin by looking at our pH. Our pH is acidotic, so what other component in our arterial blood gas is acidotic? And that is our respiratory component, our PaCO2. So we know we have a respiratory acidosis taking place. So next we need to determine, is there any compensation taking place? Well, as we can see, our HCO3, our base buffer system, isn't really doing anything, right? It's still within the normal limit. So when we have two systems that aren't competing, only our PaCO2 is out of normal and our HCO3 is normal, it's still within that neutral space, we have an uncompensated. 
respiratory acidosis taking place. Because again, as we spoke about before, when we were talking about compensation, both of our metabolic and respiratory components have got to be out of whack. They've got to be trying to compete and fix each other, right? If one is neutral, then we don't have any compensation taking place yet. And remember, our metabolic component takes a long time to start fixing issues, right? Whereas our our respiratory component can work very quickly. It can be 10 to 30 minutes and you're gonna start seeing changes when it comes to your um, ABG for the respiratory component. So in this case, because our bicarb, our HCO3 is normal and our other two numbers are out of whack, we know that this is going to be an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. So example four, we have a pH of 7.23 a PaCO2 of 51, and a bicarbon HCO3 of 30. So we always start with our pH, normal 7.35 to 7.45. 7.23 is low, right? So it's falling on the acid end of the spectrum. Next, we move on to our respiratory. Our PaCO2 is 51, normal is 35 to 45. It's greater than 45, so we know that this is more of an acidosis taking place when it comes to the respiratory system. And lastly, we have the metabolic system. Our bicarb system is 30. We know that a normal HCO3 is 21 to 28, so this actually falls greater than the 28 in our normal values, and that is going to be an alkalosis, right? So again, we take a look at our pH, and then we figure out what's happening. So our pH is 7.23. We have more of an acid state taking place. Well, what other value in our respiratory and metabolic component matches with our acidity that's taking place in the pH? And that's the respiratory component, right? So we know we have a respiratory acidosis ABG. So now we need to determine, is there any compensation taking place? So we look at our metabolic and respiratory components. So our metabolic component is high and our respiratory component is also high. So they're competing. One's more acidic, one's more alkalotic, right? So we know that the body is trying to compensate. The base is trying to ramp itself up to fix that acidotic state happening within our PaCO2, our um, respiratory component within our ABGs. So we know that we have some kind of compensation, but what kind of compensation do we have? We take a look at our pH to make that determination. So is our pH normal or abnormal? Well, we know that our pH is still technically abnormal, right? So if our pH is abnormal, we are compensating, but it's not a full compensation. So we only have a partially compensated respiratory acidosis. It's partially compensated because the HCO3 is now alkalotic to balance out that acidosis taking place in the respiratory component, but it's not enough compensation to get us to that full compensation that we want to be at because we still have an abnormal pH. So again, partially compensated respiratory acidosis. So lastly, we're going to take a look at our last example, example five. We've got a pH of 7.43, a PaCO2 of 30, and a bicarb and HCO3 of 20. So again, we always begin with our pH. Is it high or is it low? Well, our normal is 7.35 to 7.45, but wait, it falls within normal, right? So we know that this is a neutral value. So we've got to start taking a look at our PaCO2 and our HCO3. Are they out of whack or are they also normal? Our PaCO2 is 30. A normal PaCO2 is between 35 to 45, so this is actually low, right? So we don't have enough acid. This is the acid component of our arterial blood gas. So this is a more alkalotic um, base system of our arterial blood gas. Next, we need to take a look at our HCO3. It's 20. Normal is 21 to 28. So again, it's less than 21, making this more acidic. So we've got two systems are out of whack. We don't know what's happening, and we've got a neutral pH. So again, we have to take a look and see what's going on on our spectrum. So our pH is 7.43. We know that 
right in the middle, 7.4 is where we want to be. But now we're leaning towards one side, right? So between 7.4 and 7.45, we're going to be in a more alkalotic state. So this particular ABG is more alkalotic than it is acidotic, right? So we know that we have some kind of alkalosis taking place. So what other value matches our alkalotic pH, our more alkalotic pH? And that's going to be our um, respiratory component. Our respiratory component is 30. That's less than 35. We're losing all of that acid. Uh, we're becoming more basic because of the buildup of the bicarb within our system. So we know that this is some kind of respiratory alkalosis. So now we needed to determine what kind of compensation is taking place in our patient, right? So we know that our pH is neutral. It's not abnormal. So when it is not abnormal, we know that we are fully compensating, right? Because once we get that beautiful pH back within normal, there's full compensation taking place, but we still have opposing PaCO2 and HCO3 taking place. So there is some kind of issue with our acid base imbalance, but it has fixed itself enough that we can now see full compensation with our respiratory alkalosis. I hope that this video was helpful in helping pass your arterial blood gas, nursing school exams, as well as your NCLEX like a boss. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe here to my YouTube and hit that notification bell so that way you're informed every time I post a new video. You can also follow me on my social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram and make sure that you check out my website at www.nursechung.com. There I'm going to have NCLEX style questions, resources, handouts, everything you need to pass those exams like a boss. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.